In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a LAMP server on Rocky Linux. And LAMP is an acronym that stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, or Maria Database and PHP. And this is a server stack that allows you to run websites and web applications on top of it. So let's go ahead and get on into it. I'm going to assume that you have a Rocky Linux install already. If you don't, I have some credits down below that you can get started with a free VPS. So that's what I am logged into here and we're going to get started. Um, basically, let me prove to you that I have Rocky Linux installed and running. So I'm going to cat the etc uh, os release file in here. os release and uh, Rocky Linux version 8.5. There you go. Let's go ahead and update our packages. And now if you're on, uh, if you're used to sent OS or Red Hat, you use yum for your package manager. If you're Debian or Ubuntu, you use apt or apt-get. On here on Rocky Linux, the package man manager is called DNF. And in order to upgrade our system, we would issue a DNF upgrade command something like this. And I was in here earlier, so all of my packages are up to date. This could take anywhere from a couple seconds to a few minutes, 10, 15, 20 minutes, uh, depending on how much uh, you have to update. So go ahead and make sure you take care of that first. And then we can proceed with the installation of the LEMP server. So we have the L, we have Rocky Linux. The A, I said LAMP, I meant LAMP. The A is Apache, okay, so that's our web server, so let's install that. Uh, the package name for Apache is um, HTTPD, okay? So it's a little, it's not Apache, Apache 2, it's HTTPD. Um, that will go ahead and install all of these packages. So that looks good to me. Type Y, hit enter, and we will skip forward through this. And now with this, let's use the systemctl command to start that up. So systemctl start httpd. And we can check the status of it with system systemctl status httpd. Uh, and I cannot spell system systemtem. And that uh, service is active and running. Now, if we want the service to automatically start up when we reboot our server, uh, we can do system ctl enable httpd. So that'll go ahead and take care of uh, creating a symlink and that'll automatically start up when our server reboots. So at this point we have a um, a web server and it should be serving a default page so we can verify that by opening a browser and going to our IP address so this is my IP address let me type that in a browser so we have 165.227.206.139 hit enter and we see the default landing page for Apache, so HTTP server test page um, powered by Apache, powered by Rocky Linux. So that means we have configured it correctly, we've installed it correctly. Um, let's let me show you where this file is being served from on our system here. So if we go to the user share httpd directory, um, and I think no index after that. Yeah, if we take a look in here, you'll see an index.html file. And um, let's take a look at what that actually looks like, the code itself. So let's see if we can match up here. So this is just visiting. I'll do a search for just visiting. And you see that header element right there, just visiting. Let me change that to like, comment, subscribe. And we'll save that. And back over here, if we refresh the page, you'll see that that now changes to like, comment, subscribe. So we are we are indeed looking at the same thing here. Okay, so that is um, the web server part of this HTTPD or Apache. Let's install PHP next. So right now, let's confirm, let's see if we have PHP installed with PHP-V. 
and PHP is not installed. So uh, we can use our DNF package manager again to install that, but there's a couple different versions of PHP available. So let's do a DNF um, module M-O-D-U-L-E list PHP. And that's gonna show us that there are PHP 7.2, 7.3, 3, and 7.4 modules available. Uh, the D next to 7.2 means that's the default one. If we would issue a DNF install PHP, then that would install version 7.2, but let's say we wanted to install 7.4. We would need to do something like this, DNF module enable PHP colon 7.4 hit enter, and that will uh, switch it up to PHP 7.4. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, so now when we do DNF install PHP, uh, that should install PHP version 7.4 for us. And you can see that that is the case here. In addition to some other dependencies such as PHP, PHP common. Okay, so let's go ahead and type yes, hit enter to install those. And as always, we'll skip fast, we'll fast forward through this. All right, the next step is to enable PHP FPM, which is kind of like an intermediary between the web server Apache and PHP. And that was a dependency, if you remember, from up above uh, that, that, we, that was installed when we installed PHP. So let me show you how to do that. It's gonna be this very similar process system, CTL start php-fpm and then system ctl status php fpm and that's active and running and then system ctl enable php fpm to have it automatically start up when the system starts up so just to make sure we um everything's in place let's do a system ctl restart httpd and php FPM. I'm not sure if that's completely necessary, but uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and do that just to make sure we're in good shape. Okay, so again, we have our index.html file here. I made an index.php file in here as well, and that looks like this. It, uh, whoops, I can't use Vim. Feel free to use whatever text editor you are uh, most comfortable with. Um, simple PHP open close tag and we're gonna echo the time is, and then dynamically generate the time, hours, minutes, seconds. So we'll save that. And instead of, uh, it's it's okay to have both of these files here, but if you have two of them, the, the server might get confused as far as which one you wanna go to. So I'm gonna remove the index.html file. And yes, that's okay to remove that. So now we just have index.php. And if we come back over here and refresh the page, that should load and it doesn't. And this wasn't planned to have this forbidden page pop up, but it's always good to have this type of thing happen when I'm filming because I can show you how the debug process works. Um, anyway, we have to tell the web server that we t there was an HTML file in the index before, but now we change it to a, a PHP file. So let me show you how to do that. Um, Basically, we'll go to the etc, httpd, uh, conf.d directory, and we'll take a look in here. Um, there is this welcome.conf, it's just the default configuration file. So let's edit that. So vi welcome.conf, and in here uh, on one of these lines, you'll see that this a list down here. Uh, was looking for a file called index.html. Now we just deleted that file and renamed it to pretty much index.php. So let's do the same thing in here. So it looks for that file instead, and we'll save that. And in order to update the changes, uh, tell it the, the server about it, we can do system ctl reload httpd, hit enter, and now if we go to this page and refresh it, we should see the dynamically generated page with the time 341.35. And if we refresh it again, that time will update according to the server time, which we can confirm 1541.46. So um, that's all looking good. So we have L for 
Rocky Linux, A for Apache, P for PHP. Now let's do the M for MySQL or Maria database. We're going to be using Maria database. And we can, you guys know the process at this point, get in, get that installed on our system with DNF install Maria, M-A-R-I-A-D-B dash server. Hit enter. And that's going to be 43 megabytes downloaded and 100 megabytes, 191 megabytes on our system. Type Y, hit enter. Fast forward through this. Okay, and as always, we will do a system CTL start Maria DB. And that'll go ahead and start up that service for us. And we'll check the status system CTL status Maria DB. And that is active and running. And to have it start up automatically when we reboot system CTL enable Maria DB. Okay. So, uh, good practice uh, with a fresh install of a MySQL Maria database server. We can do MySQL secure installation, hit enter, and this is just a series of steps to lock down your server a little bit, your MySQL server a little bit. So, uh, we don't have a root password right now, but we will set one. So, type Y, hit enter. Uh, go ahead and type your secure root password and confirm it. And do you want to remove anonymous users? Yes. Disallow login remotely for root? Yes. Remove the test database? Yes. Reload privilege tables now? Yes. Okay. So uh, now that our MySQL server is a little bit more secure, let's log in with MySQL-U for user root dash P. And then it'll prompt us for the password that we just created. So type that in. And this is the MySQL Maria database command prompt. So in here, we can look at the databases that we have available with show databases, semicolon, and there's three by default. And if we want to look at the tables associated with, let's say, the MySQL database, uh, we can do use MySQL and then show tables, semicolon. And these are just the default tables that are associated with that database. Now, I'm not going to go through how to create tables, all that stuff. I have another video over here if you're interested in that. And if you're interested also in putting a website like WordPress on top of your Rocky Linux server, I also have a video for you on that as well. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.